Well, hello there. This is Mark Risen Hopkins, editor in chief, Silicon Angle, and today I am joined with Sean Piani, editor in chief of Techno Buffalo. You know, it just it wouldn't be a video if you hadn't started it with "Well, hello there." Exactly. Well, I mean, come on, <laughs> it is me we're talking about here. So, and yeah, I think this is the first show that we've done uh, when you have been the editor in chief of an organization. Yep, it is. We we haven't done a video in. I don't remember. <laughs> it's been quite a while. Yeah. But, yeah, this is the uh, the first one since I became EIC. Mm-hmm. So how how is that? How's that working out for you? Um, I've taken up drinking. <laughs> uh, no, I'm kidding. Uh, no, I love it. it. It's it's a lot of work, but it, it's it's a very different beast than uh, just writing every day. Yeah. Well, I've noticed the output that you have written since becoming editor in chief has dropped dramatically from like six books to two. So. <laughs> yeah, I uh, a day. I'm just, I still write 30, 40 posts a week, but it's yeah. not the seven or eight I was well, doing it. Well, so. You're doing better than me. I mean, I've been, I, I know you have a different kind of organization over there, but uh, I mean, I've, I've almost stopped posting completely, um, but uh, been, been working a lot more on video work. And I've got a pretty good support staff, Kristen Nicole, as you know, from mm-hmm. my days at Mashable, is working with us here. So. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of funny how that all worked out. But. Yeah, yeah, and, and your your organization has gotten pretty big this year too. I mean, yeah, we we grew. Uh, let's see, we added one, two, three, like five or six writers this year, mm-hmm. and we we just posted we're looking for more. So is Revision Three the the show on Revision Three? Is that this year uh, that it started as well, or is that? Uh... Yeah, that started. Uh, like midsummer, around okay. July or so. It's it's really kind of raised the profile. I keep hearing your guys' name get dropped in different places now. Yeah, we we've got three shows a week over there on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and we're real happy, and they seem to be happy. So it, it's working out. Cool. So uh, we're here today to talk about some predictions and and whatnot, not just uh, wax about history and how great we're doing. Uh, so I uh, figured I would uh, get your perspective on things. You are in touch, of course, with the uh, the gadget world more than mm-hmm. the other, especially mobile. And uh, so I, I had a few questions. Uh, mobile, of course, being a pillar of Silicon Angle, but uh, what was 2011 uh, like for mobile? What major shifts did you see? I mean, obviously, there's a big story. It's like the WebOS story was pretty big. Right, right. iOS got only bigger. Yeah, oh, well, as it was an unfortunate, I mean, it's a great operating system, mm-hmm. but HP didn't know what to do with it. Yeah. They didn't know how to market it. They didn't know what they were doing. And personally, I'm excited about going open source. Mm-hmm. You know, we'll, we'll see if the market can bear out a third operating system. The, the, the big issue has been, I mean, as we've seen, you know, Windows Mobile, or you know, Windows Phone as it's now called, isn't getting anywhere. BlackBerry is on the ropes. Mm-hmm. You know, and Android and iOS keep gaining even more market share. So, can the market sustain a third operating system? I don't know, but WebOS could actually make a play, you know, once it's out there and open and everyone can work with it. So, the, the tough thing to think about when you're talking about can the, can the market sustain a third operating system or even a fourth? Uh, mm-hmm. just, yeah, I, I'm sure you are like me when you, you you judge these things based upon like the PC market, but in truth, the, the mobile market is is a totally different animal. It's a completely different animal. I mean, I don't think anyone could have predicted Android was going to take off the way it did, but when you've got it, it's out there, it's open. You know, we've got 50 HTC handsets released per day. Uh, you know, you've got Motorola, you've got Samsung. I mean, what Samsung's done with it, you know, even though it, it's layered with TouchWiz, it's taken off like a rocket. I mean, I don't think anyone could have predicted that they would sell a million units of the Galaxy Note by now. A 5.3-inch screen? Who wants a phone that big in their pocket? Right. You know, and they've sold a million units. Mm-hmm. Kudos to them. And, you know, and it looks to only be getting bigger, you know, pun intended. <laughs> because now it's coming to the United States. Yeah. You know, it, it's amazing what's happened. I, I think what 
everyone's not thinking about, though, is there are so many handsets released. There is not one handset you can point at like you can with the iPhone. Yes, the Galaxy S2 somewhat, but even in that, there's 30 flavors of the Galaxy S2. You know, you've got the Epic 4G Touch for Sprint. You've got the Skyrocket. You've got, you know, all these different Galaxy S2s. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can point to it being a success, but you can't point to it and go, that is the Galaxy S2. Like, you can't, that's the iPhone. Right. You know, so Android needs a a centralized handset that everyone can focus on. Because, yeah, you can say Android's gained all this market share. That's going to happen when you fire a shotgun. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, you might sell 10 of this handset and 20 of this handset, but you're not selling the 15 million of the iPhone. Right, right. So, but wouldn't that sort of destroy what makes Android a success, though, if if it were to uh, put focus behind one particular handset? Yeah, I, it would to an extent, but I, I think Android needs something that everyone can focus on. And that's the problem, because if you talk to the developers... They're having to, you know, oh, it's so fragmented. Yeah, it is fragmented. And an ice cream sandwich is going to fix that somewhat, but there's still going to be all these lingering 2.2 handsets and 2.3 handsets and the honeycomb handsets. Mm -hmm. You know, there's still a ton of fragmentation out there. Hopefully, ice cream sandwich will correct that somewhat. But now with Google buying Motorola, I'm, I'm thinking we're finally going to see a focused on Android tablet. We're going to see a focused on Android phone. Yeah, and, and hopefully it won't totally kill all the other devices out there. But Android needs a flagship. They need a true flagship. So what is what is your what are your de- mobile devices of choice right now? Uh, I'm carrying a iPhone 4s mm-hmm. uh, because finally it came to Sprint. This is my first iPhone. Every everyone's was always assumed I had an iPhone, yeah. but I, I was too Sprint loyal to <laughs> right. To leave them. And then I carry a uh, Samsung Captivate, which is a Galaxy S1 on AT&T, although I'm going to be changing that here pretty soon. So I, I, I'm using both operating systems. You know, you, you can't call me a fanboy of one. I'm carrying both. Right, right. It, even in my tablets. I, I've got sitting here a Kindle Fire and an iPad 2. Yeah, so what about the Kindle Fire? There there was a kind of a market disruptor this year. The Kindle uh, Kindle was already, I mean, okay, well, here, here's our ebook segment. <laughs> the Kindle Fire, the biggest problem is, yes, it's Android, uh-huh. but I can't do with it what I want to with Android. I can't use the native Google Talk application. Yes, I could root. I know everyone immediately will go, root it, root it. Mm-hmm. But, you know, when you're talking your average person, they're not going to be rooting the device. So, yeah. yeah, I know Amazon wants to have their own ecosystem, but come on, let us have Google Talk. Right. Let us let us have Gmail. I mean, is that so horrible? It's not going to stop us from buying from you. Right. I mean, it's not like they have their own alternative. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, and they do have third party apps in there. You know, they they have uh, Trillium and IM Plus and all that sort of stuff. But Trillium was good about ten years ago. But come on, I know. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah. I I remember when everyone was like, "You got to use Trillium." Yeah. But. The, the Kindle Fire was interesting because it's seven inches. You know, now it started all these rumors: Are we going to see an iPad Mini? Is Apple going to be concerned about the seven-inch market? No, Apple's not. A- Apple does not chase markets. Apple creates markets. Right. So they're not, they're not going to chase the seven-inch market. So Apple creating markets. That's a good segue. Uh, the the big prediction I've been hearing from a lot of gadget guys this year is regarding, of course, this was I think teased a little bit in the uh, Steve Jobs biography was the Apple TV, not that little yeah. abortion that they call, I, that they call the Apple TV now, but an actual TV with an Apple iOS on it. it we're calling it iTV just to differentiate it, okay. but yeah, <laughs> it, it's we've known about this thing for years. Mm-hmm. Um, the biography basically gave us everything but a release date. Right. We know it's coming. Mm-hmm. It's just a matter of when. And and now there's some question about are they going to just come out with a 32 and 37 inch televisions to begin with? Though, you know, some people are going, oh, well, they can't compete against the 55 inch monsters out there. It's Apple. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> people are still going to go, it's Apple. Right. Well, but uh, this is my question, right? Because Apple has traditionally, I mean, it's it's like, it's it's as much Apple, Appleism to fail at video as it is for Apple to win at everything else. you got an excellent point. Um, I think, if it, I mean, we're hearing all these rumors that they're coming up with a la carte, you know, programming solutions. If that's true, that could be a big, you know, win for them because I don't think anyone is happy with the way cable works these days. No. You know, I mean, I've got so many channels that I have never once turned on and I will never turn on. You know, I'm sorry, I'm not turning on the Golf Channel. It's not happening. <laughs> Why not? Come on. <laughs> Everyone needs to sleep once in a while. Exactly. I was <laughs> like, if I, if I ever have insomnia, I'll turn on the Golf Channel. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot to be said for that. But can even Apple possibly get all the content providers to change that much? Uh, that's a big question. It is a very big question. Well, I mean, well, to, to, to keep them the same topic, but then switch companies, Microsoft, uh, what they're doing with the Xbox, I'm sure you've seen. Uh, you're, oh, yeah. You're a big Xbox guy. Yeah. Uh, that... That's a pretty marked departure, what they were able to convince uh, Verizon and Comcast to do uh, with uh, allowing live TV on the Xbox console. Well, you know, I think people have been saying for years that television's the next big thing, but I think it's happened a lot slower than people expected. You look at devices like the Xbox, the Roku, I'm a huge Roku fan. Mm -hmm. I I think the Roku is about the greatest thing ever invented. You know, we're starting to see more and more solutions. And I think at some point, no matter how much the television companies want to fight it, they're going to have to finally listen. Yeah. You know, the cable subscription numbers are dropping slowly, but they're dropping. Mm-hmm. You know. And they're dropping from the bottom, too. It's not just economic yeah. pressures. It's it's the, the, the term for it that I've been using and I'm starting to see pop up. It was in the LA Times this week. It was the cord nevers. The, the, the generation that's coming up, it's like they're looking at a cable bill and yeah. that's 50 bucks a month that I could be spending on, you know, Spotify and get every music, every song ever created or, you know, spend it, you know, on uh, Hulu and get almost everything that's out right now. I actually have not heard that term. I'd heard about those type of people, but I had not heard that term. That term is perfect. Yeah. We are growing up now with a generation, they're never going to subscribe to cable, ever. You know, and yes, some of them are turning to torrents. I mean, there's no way around that. But there's so many solutions now. Mm -hmm. And at some point, the the television companies are going to have to go, oh, wait a minute, what we've been doing for 60 years isn't working anymore? Right. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I mean, it's their turn, right? It was everybody else's turn the last, uh, you know, five years or so. Oh, uh, well, Going back, you know, as anyone that's watched us before knows we love e-readers. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, you look at what happened to Borders this year. Okay. You know, it, we're seeing it in so many different segments now, and it, it's television's turn. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you look at the movies, they were, money was down again this year at the box office. The attendance was down. Nobody wants to go to a theater anymore. Right. You know, I've got a 55 inch television downstairs with a Blu ray player. Why would I bother? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I can watch Thor at home three months after it's in the theater. Yeah. It's clear. It's the earlier release date that people are looking I mean, that's the only benefit these days from going to a theater. I mean, cause especially with the, if you're like me and 3D gives you a headache. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, okay, there's no way I'm missing The Dark Knight Rises, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, there, there's always those, those blockbusters that you want to yeah. see, but I'm not going there for the rom- the rom-coms anymore, you know? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I, it's not happening, you know? And, and Hollywood in general is learning the lesson, but, you know, they, they're fighting it tooth and nail. I mean, oh, look at Sopa. I mean, that's the most ridiculous thing that's ever been proposed. Well, probably yeah. not, but... Well, dark it's, it's pretty dark close to it, yeah. yeah. You know, and they're just going to have to finally embrace the internet. You know, and they're just, they're going to have to do it on our terms, though. I mean, did you follow this whole thing with the ultraviolet digital copies at all? 
No, I did not. I know I've, I, I'm, you know, tertiarily aware of it, but right, right. It, well, it was supposed to, you know, a lot of Blu-rays now come with digital copies, so mm-hmm. they got this bright idea. They were going to come out with ultraviolet, and you could watch the digital copy anytime and anywhere you wanted. Well, first off, you had to go through two websites to sign up for it. It doesn't work on iOS devices. It <laughs> well, I mean, and, and time and time again, it's DRM is just not bad for people like us that like our media free and copyable, but it's just a bad user experience. Mm-hmm. DRM is a bad user. I mean, Apple uh, has found that out, and they were one of the chief proponents of DRM in the in the music revolution. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, no, it, even if you look at uh, uh, you know everything from Sony and the root kits and the DRM to uh, it, more recent examples where you know Amazon has had a wild success of creating a marketplace of DRM free media. So yeah, oh yeah, I, it, it's fabulous. I I want to be able to play my digital content on the devices I want to play it on. Mm-hmm. And doing, you know, this was, the ultraviolet was such a step backwards, and it's already biting them behind. I mean, they're already going, okay, maybe this wasn't the brightest idea. Right. You think? <laughs> <laughs> but so we're, we've got forces that are running counter to each other in the marketplace that I think is interesting and worthy of note. So you've got, on the one hand, the Mark Cuban vision of the future where media isn't stored, it's streamed, Right. And and that's that's coming to pass. You've got Netflix, Google Plus, and a dozen other services that are like that that are available on every freaking device that you could possibly imagine. And then yeah. you've got the personal cloud revolution, where you've got uh, you know iOS uh, was it cloud uh, iCloud iCloud yeah duh, iCloud <laughs> I, I got stuck on the mobile meeting thing for a second, but it's iCloud now. And then you've got uh, you know Amazon's media uh, storage, you got Google's media storage lockers, you've got all these personal uh, hybrid cloud solutions that are both you know, local and uh, remote. Well, you can even buy your own clouds now. There, there's like a hundred dollar cloud box that you can buy on Amazon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everyone can run their own cloud. Right. So yeah, we're we're definitely getting away from local storage to you know the cloud storage that we heard about for years. I mean, you and I were writing about cloud storage back in '07. Yeah. And nothing was happening with it. <laughs> and, and now you can't you go know, swing a rock without hitting a cloud story. I mean, yeah. everything is in the cloud. Now. Everything is cloud. That, 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 so I was earlier in the week, or last week, I talked with John McRae, uh, one of the former executives from uh, Plaxo Comcast, and he uh, has spent kind of a daughter company there called Timberfish that he just retired from to go start his next thing. But uh, the, you know that that's what he talked about was his, his convergence of cloud, social, and mobile, creating a personal cloud. That, yeah. Uh, and and so this is this to me is an interesting market, especially given that you know we're a, a cloud enterprise blog to follow. Uh, given the fact that it's similar in some ways that you know because all these clouds are basically silos, just as every operating system on mobile and desktop or silos. Right. But it's a, a much more wide open market where these silos, you know, you can have a couple dozen competing silos and they all be doing quite well. Yeah. Because nobody deletes anything anymore. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I mean, I can't believe how many different clouds I use. I mean, I've got, you know, SugarSync, XMarks, uh, you know, I, I, I use so many different clouds in a day it's ridiculous. And, and I love the fact, though, it's now gotten to a point where I don't think about it. It's not special anymore. It just happens. Yes. You know, and I love the fact that I can do all sorts of work at my office, come home, and about five minutes after I'm home, every file I created for the day is here. Right. I didn't have to get out of thumb drive. I didn't have to do, you know, get out of, I, I'm dating myself, a floppy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Ah, uh, the three and a half inch discs. Oh, yeah. Uh, but well, no, it, it's great. It, this is where technology needed to be going, and it's finally getting there. Yeah, we, we're living in the future. Yeah, well, <laughs> although I still don't have my flying car. Damn it. <laughs> I would settle for one that drove itself. But uh, uh, Google's trying. Yes, they are. So, uh, another thing I wanted to hit on uh, had to do with. Uh, perhaps so. There's there's been an audience shift that I've sensed is coming, but uh, you're the first uh, other editor in chief I've interviewed for the prediction request. So I wanted to get your take on it. 
it's been a huge year for mobile in a lot of ways, as we've already discussed. Um, for the enterprise, this is the not maybe not the first year, but the first year where it seemed to matter where mobile was a topic. You had announcements from Oracle and SAP, as well as a lot of the other you know down the food chain storage and enterprise vendors, all making major announcements uh, for the first time about mobile uh, compatibility and connectivity, and of course all the other things that are connected to that security threats. So I wanted to talk to you about uh, a sense, maybe an audience shift or a sense of uh, maybe from the vendors themselves, how they're pitching uh, their mobile devices uh, with regard to the enterprise. There is far more in all the tech specs we receive, which, I mean, we see tech specs on absolutely every device out there. There's more and more about military-grade encryption. There's mm -hmm. more and more about the security. There's also a lot more rugged devices for being used out in the field. You know, we, we've tested this to military-grade you know, military standards. Mm -hmm. yeah, we're seeing more and more... Of it, almost every device now lists what type of encryption it has, and we know that's directed towards the enterprise field. You know, the enterprise field used to be the sole domain of BlackBerry, and we're hearing more and more about, you know, the iPhone's been adapted, the iPad's been adapted, the, you know, this Android device. Even the U.S. military just okayed an Android device running Android 2.2, it has no marketplace functionality, so there's no chance of, you know, uh, spyware getting in there. But, yeah, everybody is looking at mobile, and that's because we're now carrying devices, you know, that even four years ago we couldn't have dreamed of. We're carrying computers in our pockets. Right. Everyone is insisting on mobile as the way of the future. It, I, I can't blame them. I mean, it's amazing what I can do with a device. I can go all day now without touching a computer. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. You know, and so, yeah, I, we're seeing all sorts of information now about, you know, this can be used for this sort of enterprise. This can be used for this data encryption. Yeah, it's definitely having an impact. And it's been very slight, and it's not that they're making a big point of it. It's just there. Right. You know, so, yeah, it's definitely changing. I, th I think perhaps in my field, uh, the most impactful announcement that I felt with regard to mobile and the enterprise was the keynotes at VMworld uh, conference about virtualization and server and cloud stuff. Uh, they spent, I think, of the four keynotes on the last day or first day, whatever it was, uh, there were the four keynotes, they spent two of them talking about uh, mobile and uh, the experience of the desktop being directly translatable, uh, the sessions and the profiles being directly translatable to a personal device, uh, both in the desktop environment, because on in the desktop environment, I think uh, a trend that seems to be rearing its head, ugly or not, depends on the perspective, <laughs> is uh, the thin client, right? I mean, that's a, it's like a perennial favorite. In, in, in the desktop world, you know, every 10 years, you start talking about thin clients again. But a couple of companies like Panologic uh, and uh, Wise are really going heavy marketing these, you know, $200, I mean, about the size of a Roku, uh, sits on your desktop and has all the functionality, including some video games if you want, of, of a uh, normal desktop. And right. so you can, you know, load any profile onto that and then, you know, you can documents of Evernote or Word or whatever are accessible on that as well as you know on your mobile platform, and that was what the whole VMware announcement mm -hmm. was about this year. This this year, uh, right? So I mean, and VMware is no small. I mean, the biggest virtualization company out there, it's a competitor competing only with probably Citrix uh, in, in that in that field. Uh, and SAP had a very similar announcement. They announced uh, SAP had their their, their iPad, I can't remember the name of the uh, development environment, but it's basically it's a, a SAP marketplace. You can create your own marketplace within your you know, Fortune 100 company of all these apps that are available for your users. And it's not out there in the public marketplace. It's, right. it's an SAP. Right. It's an internal, like, so it's the Techno Buffalo marketplace. So you've got mm -hmm. you know, your analytics package and your you know, blogging tool or whatever. You know? Right. Yeah. So, 
Yeah, I, we're seeing I, just recently American Airlines announced that they were getting rid of flight manuals and switching completely to iPads. Right. You know, we're going to see more and more situations where these devices are changed into a, a corporate specific device. You know, I, I, I believe it was uh, the average pilot carried 40 pounds of paper on flight. Mm-hmm. So between the pilot and the co-pilot, you got 80 pounds you just removed from the plane. Yeah. You know. So I guess they check another bag for free. Yeah. So yeah, you, you, you <laughs> had to take the Kevin Smith can get on a plane. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, you're, you're going to see more of these situations where they're going, okay, maybe there's not what we need commercially, but we can develop by ourselves. That's what happened with Internet Explorer 6 and the desktop. That's why IE6 held on for so long, because all these companies designed specifically for IE6, mm-hmm. and they didn't want to have to redo all their applications. I think this is going to allow them to be a little bit more mercurial. They're going to be able to change a little bit faster because they're not having to design things so completely. Right. You know, there's going to be a lot out there that they can build off of. So, this I wanted to, and I didn't brief you on this before the call, but I wanted to see, you you may have seen... I'm out of here. Okay, I'm done. (laughs) Walk it off. Uh, uh, There was a... Cory Doctorow did a speech at the Chaos Computing Conference or Chaos, Chaos Computing Congress uh, in Europe last week. I don't know if you had a chance to take a look at that or not. No, I haven't. So uh, Cory Doctorow, obviously a uh, founder and editor over at Boing Boing and uh, known uh, authority on copyright and you know, sci-fi and all things kind of whacked out like that. Yeah. Uh, futurist, I guess you could say. Yeah, yeah, I'm familiar with him. I just didn't, haven't seen this particular speech. So he he uh, starts off the speech by saying, "I'm not going to speak on copyright. I want to speak about another topic." He calls it the, the coming war on general purpose computing, and uh, and then of course it turns into the copyright speech, which he readily admits <laughs> because he talks about okay. So we've talked about SOPA here. So he mm-hmm. talked about like how SOPA and all these you know DMCA and uh, the Protect IP Act and all these. These many battles that we've had about DRM kind of culminating and, and DRM and copyright culminating in SOPA, kind of the worst of the worst, uh, maybe boss level of uh, copyright fight. Uh, his argument is that it's probably just a mini boss. If you look in the far future of all the things that general purpose computing would bring, you know, like uh, your own home gene sequencing uh, unit, or perhaps more realistically, your own 3D printer, which could you know, do a lot of stuff that, you know, mm-hmm. would put China in some dire straits, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're going to see a world where all these industries, much like the entertainment business, are going to be lobbying for their own versions of DRM uh, for all these things we haven't even thought of yet. Right. Um, and so he's, and, and the thing that, to, to broaden up the, the DRM-less uh, you know, media file to, all this other stuff. So it's basically general purpose computing, the desktop machine, the PC. Uh, that is that is what enables all these uh, all these other things uh, to exist. And right. what the thing that struck me during his speech is that, uh, particularly in the mobile space, uh, we're seeing major trends towards uh, you know. Tethered and locked down machines. Even even my Android experience. I I, I recently uh, my netbook died, so I said okay, I'm gonna try a tablet. So I bought the Toshiba Thrive, which was the only really decent tablet that I could find on the market that wasn't tethered to a service and had a lot of power. Mm-hmm. And uh, I can do about seventy six percent, maybe even eighty percent of what I could do with my netbook. But there's just certain things that are just way too limited, either by the form factor or by Google locking out certain elements. Like you just can't do this on a. It makes you, it funnels you into an app of some right. kind. Plus, there's all the Toshiba crapware, just like every device has its own crapware built into the device. Yeah. Uh, but we're seeing this general trend in mobile where you can do so much on these mobile devices, but they're all locked down. They're not general purpose computing devices. These are appliances. Okay. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, because with a computer, even though it comes with bloatware, you can do whatever you want with it. Yes. You know, so long as you have the processing power. Um, it, it's almost like he, he's somewhat discussing the walled garden situation that you and I have discussed, I don't know how many times. But yeah, yeah it, each of these devices is a walled garden situation. Android, to an extent, is the most open. But like you said, there are limitations even to Android, what you can do with it. The it, It's funny he brings up the 3D printing because we actually got an invite the other day at Techno Buffalo about it. Come see our 3D printer at CES. And mm-hmm. I, I've been thinking about this technology a ton because it could change so much, but you know there is going to be so many limitations to what we can do with it. At least initially. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean... It, the, the DR, we, we will have not seen any form of DRM quite like we will see on the 3D printers. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Because, I mean, the, you know, everyone, when you first hear it, you're thinking, wow, I could just print out my iPad. Mm-hmm. No, that's not quite no. how this is going to work. No. Unfortunately <laughs> not. No. <laughs> as much as I'd like it. <laughs> you know, so he, he's got an excellent point. We are, to an extent, seeing the, the death of general purpose computing. And we're just kind of willy nilly walking down this road going, look at the pretty gadgets. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, I guess yeah, I guess my pointed point. question my pointed question was <clears throat> first you first of all do you see it as inevitable and second of all at what point do you see us where we're flipped I mean because right now the desktop still dominates mm-hmm. so at what point do you see us flipped around it flipped around to yeah the, the, mm-hmm. where we're we're appliance or we're appliance based computing. Uh, society or, or dominated that in the industry rather than the desktop dominated industry? Within 10 years. Um, your average person is not going to care. Hmm. There, There's a reason why Apple has sold this many iPads. It's dead simple. It's easy to use. Most people don't care. They, they use their computers for email and web browsing. That's it. Yeah. You know, they're not... Don't get me wrong. There's always going to be a place for the desktop. I mean, people like you and I, we can't exist without a desktop. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know we're hearing more and more about this Mac OS X iOS hybrid. It's coming. And you've got to wonder how free we're going to be within that environment. Oh, yeah. That's so true. even within the desktop, it, it's going to go away. Even if you and I, I mean, unless we go out and build our own ground up system, we're going to have these problems. And you even look at what they're saying that Windows 8 is going to do. You know, they're talking about Windows 8 is going to have an app store. Windows 8 is going to be for PCs and tablets. I'm still waiting to see how in the heck the same OS can run such wild. Well, you know, and this, this is, a, this is a, a, a sticking point for me as well. I mean, I'm sure... Yeah, for obvious reasons, but I think if you look at how they're they're modeling the Metro UI, uh, mm-hmm. I, mean, I think it may it may be one of those. It's the same OS, not it's the same OS. Yeah, yeah. I, th- there's a lot of wording wordplay going on with that, and so yeah, I agree. I, it's it could very well be it's just the same UI, but a, a different underlying system. I mean, it, they, I mean they, they're doing a really decent job of making the, the, the Windows 7 and, and the Xbox look alike right now, and that's a, supposedly what Windows 8 is going to look like as well. Well, uh, John Rettinger and Noah Kravitz, you know, our, our two main mobile guys, they're both currently using... Uh, well, no, I take that back. John just switched to the Galaxy Note. But up until last week, they were both using Windows Phone 7 devices mm-hmm. as their daily drivers. I mean, and that that says a lot. I mean, these guys test every single phone out right. there. Right. And they were sucked in by Windows Phone 7. They loved it. Right. And I play with it. I'm, I'm not thrilled with it, but I, 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 I got it off. <laughs> I we can, we can do a whole other show on the UIs of operating systems and mobile exactly. operating systems to figure out what's um, better. No, Doctor is right. I mean, the, the general purpose computer as we've known it for the past couple decades is going away, and it's because the vast majority of people don't care. 
Yeah. They're, they haven't cared. They're not caring. They're never going to care. It's, isn't it funny, though? I mean, it's just it's funny to think about it. The reason why DRM doesn't work is because it's not a good user experience. But mm-hmm. the reason why everything will be DRM in the future is because it is a better user experience. That is an excellent point. That is a really excellent point because you, you look at iOS and it essentially is a version of DRM. I cannot put anything on there unless I jailbreak it that does not get Apple seal of approval. Yeah. That is a form of DRM. Yeah. <laughs> so the, what I heard on, on Twitter one time, it's, it's oppression, but oppression feels really good. <laughs> <laughs> I, for one, welcome our iOS overlords. Yeah. Uh, you know, but, and then you see there there are problems with like Android doesn't control, you know, Google doesn't control the Android market. And we've seen all sorts of wild things go through there. You yeah, know, the big story this weekend was the, uh, the, the official Syria. Uh, oh, God. Yeah, that one gave me a good laugh. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there's been a, a fake Netflix app that it was really weird. All it was doing was it would take your username and password, and then nothing else happened with it. And then there's nothing in the Netflix account that's worth getting. Yeah. You can't see the credit card number. But somebody went through all this trouble. <laughs> I have no idea. I mean, I, yeah, I, I totally I see that stuff all the time. And there's like all these shell apps that are basically browser short links, you know, I mean, right. It, it's, right. A, it's, a, it's a zoo. It's, it, that's one of my biggest gripes with Android is that, you know, people talk about how many apps are available, but really when you get down to it, how many apps are willing, that you're willing to use are actually there. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it, like, like I said, I carry both an Android and an uh, iPhone and yeah, the number of Android apps I load is nowhere near what I load on my iPhone. I, John Renger, our president, took a look at my iPhone one day and was like, really, you have this many apps? So I was like, they all do big things. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And no, I'm not going broke, everyone. I'm primarily free apps. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's it's interesting. Uh, wow, Doctor really hit a nail on the head I had not thought about. I, I never thought about the fact that, the, you know, the computers I was using back in the 80s and the 90s are going away. I mean, we're totally in a different age. I mean, if, if oh, Steve yeah. Jobs was Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak were born today with the, the industry as it is, they would never be where they ended ended up. Oh no! I mean, no, there's all. the 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 what your my my first computer had DOS and QBasic, and I learned how to code and because I wanted to have programs. You know, yeah. uh, and yeah. that that age does not exist anymore. If you want programs, you just Think of what a program might be, and the chances are it's already been written. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean, my first computer was a Commodore sixty four. I mean, I I went to summer computer programming camp <laughs> <laughs> and, and learned to write a two hundred line program. And ooh, look, I made a game. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I remember there there were magazines that came out with printed out programs. Yeah, and you'd retype it. <laughs> it's totally the the worst way to transfer a program to a mass net, but that's how you did it. You it, it never failed. You would get an error on line two hundred. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you left out a parenthesis. <laughs> <laughs> and, and of course, with GW Basic, you've got to like retype the whole freaking thing or something. Or oh god, yeah. Hey, you and I grew up in a very very different age and. You're right. I mean, Wozniak, Jobs, Gates, none of those people can happen today. You know, now we, we celebrate the 16-year-old app developer, mm-hmm. you know, who's going to make a couple hundred grand, but he's never going to make, you know, the billions that the original guys did. Yeah. You know, yeah, there's still going to be revolutions in computing, and I certainly don't know what they're going to be. If they did, I, I would not be sitting here talking to you right now. I'd be sipping champagne, you know, <laughs> in a golden <laughs> palace. But, you know, it, it's going to be a very interesting time we're entering. And I, I think tablets are definitely the first step towards where we're going. You know, what the end point is, who knows. But I think tablets 
you know, Jobs always used to like to say, you know, the post-PC era. And a lot of people have debated, you know, is that true? Are we entering the post-PC era? I think we are. You know, we but, want to be free. We want to be mobile. And I use the word free very, very loosely here. I mean it in the sense that I'm not going to have to sit at a desk. Uh, well, so uh, let me let me present a possible less dark future than what Dr. may predict here. Because, uh, one of the, again, going back to the conversation I had last week with John McRae, the mm-hmm. big trend that he was wanting to point to was this thing called, uh, well, it's basically wearable computing, but he called it the uh, the personal cloud or the new the new connected devices. Um, and he had, a, you know, a, about five or six little devices sitting around his desk that he set up as a, there's some sort of fitness headband that would tell you what your sleep cycles and REM cycles were, and of course the mm-hmm. Fitbit and the Jawbone. Uh, right. We would also talk about the Google goggles that were talked about in the New York Times two weeks ago that actually give you an augmented reality heads up display. Right. We talked about this Kickstarter project that I bought into that uh, allows you to have uh, an always on Bluetooth enabled HD camera built into your glasses if it doesn't look like you do. Uh, so, I mean, there's all these, these little peripherals and we're actually walking around with this personal network, personal area network, personal cloud. Uh, with all the devices that we have in our utility belts or whatever we've got. And, uh, the, the ability to make these devices is actually the barrier to entry is lower than that. You know, like three of the devices that John and I talked about were, uh, Kickstarter projects. Right. Uh, and, you know, granted, you know, like the one that I discussed, they were ex Cisco because they were the engineers from Flip and they, you know, got laid off obviously this year. Um, so, uh, they had nothing else better to do, but you, you know, you've got the Arduino, uh, circuit boards. You've got like a, you know, a half dozen other competitors in that realm, uh, that you can do amazing things with, install, install Linux and do whatever you want with it. So perhaps the appliance age need not be mutually exclusive to general purpose computing. It's just that we're doing more hardware hacking than software hacking. I think that's an excellent point. I mean, you look at any device that comes out now. I, I forget what the little device was that came out last week that people hacked and got Android and Angry Birds to run on it. Mm. You know, it, yeah, I, I, there's more and more hardware hacking going on. You know, you constantly see, you know, root kits and, you know, I, I've been able to get a device to do this, you know. People were able to get the Barnes & Noble Nook, which looked like the most underpowered thing in the world to run a full version of Android. Mm-hmm. Yeah, matter of fact, our own Noah Kravitz uh, built a twenty dollar Mac recently using the first generation uh, Apple TV. He hacked it and got it to run Mac OS X. Wow! And, and turned it into a twenty dollar Mac that serves his media files around his house now. Nice. You know, there, there there's a big movement towards making sure that devices do what we want them to do. And so, yeah, that may be the solution to the general purpose computing. But then again, you know, I think about people like my own parents. I don't see my mother sitting around going, you know, I was able to root that phone and get it to run honeycomb. <laughs> right, right. Well, so what I'm saying is that the hackers are always the trailblazers. So the early mm-hmm. adopters. Oh, yeah. So you'll, you'll see people do stuff like that. And then you'll see, then you'll see uh, either through family distribution, like, hey, mom, I know you're looking for a phone. You've only got 200 bucks to spend. Guess what? I've got one of these uh, WebOS tablets. I'll just install Android for you. You know, yeah, yeah. Or, exactly. or something like this, right? I mean, there, there's a there's a dozen different scenarios. Plus, you know, Kickstarter projects. These things run out of the box. Yeah. Right. So, like the, these glasses, I didn't have to do any of that. I got a couple Cisco guys working for me. I gave them 300 bucks. They're gonna give me one. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's essentially yeah. how it pans out, right? Yeah, has that project been funded? That sounds oh, really good. It, it was it was uh, overfunded, in fact. Uh, and awesome. then and uh, my I was lucky enough to get in the pre order stage, so I should be seeing it in the next couple of weeks. I'll do a review when I get it. That sounds awesome. Yeah, I start it has been one of those things where I, it, it's fascinating to me because it's allowing people to come up with these bizarre projects that they could have never sold to anyone else. You know, nobody would ever touch this thing, but they're able to go out and go, hey, we got this idea. You got a couple bucks? Yeah. <laughs> I, I think 
things like Kickstarter are going to also really help form the future because now it's available to anyone. Anyone can find that funding. You know, so long as you aren't an idiot and write a horrible Kickstarter page, which I've seen a gajillion <laughs> of those. Yes. Hey, yeah. But it's fascinating. I We are definitely at the cusp of a new era in computing. I, I'm excited and fearful at the same time because we don't know what's coming at this point. You know, you look at desktop sales are dropping every year. Laptop sales are holding about medium. You know, the tablet revolution, I, I still don't call it a tablet revolution. I call it the iPad revolution. You know, there were 101 tablets at CES last year. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And somebody actually counted them up. You know, how many of them can you name? Maybe maybe a dozen. That's because I'm in the industry. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, it, <laughs> I'm sorry. Besides the Motorola Zoom, which is where now? Yes. Uh, <laughs> I, I can hardly name any. Yeah. You know, um, so it, it's definitely the iPad revolution that we're going through and not the tablet revolution. I think the tablet revolution can happen, but it's going to take more than just the iPad to lead it. And... Maybe it's Amazon. It you could know. be. It could be. Yeah. Yep. Ebooks. We didn't call that one early, did we? Uh, I believe you and I called ebooks before just about anybody. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you and I did more videos about e readers. <laughs> and the technology and dissections and all that. Oh my gosh. We were really oh, kind the of the one where you tore apart the issue of Esquire. <laughs> <laughs> I was curious. <laughs> And no, it's amazing uh, watching what's happening with e-readers, you know, and especially the Kindle. I mean, the Kindle is the e-reader right now. And it's fascinating because you and I were so far, <laughs> we're like, everyone, you need to watch this. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I think the same thing is going to happen with tablets. You know, a lot of people are saying, oh, tablets aren't going to be anything. They're just for content, you know, consumption. They're going to get there. Yeah. You know, and, and yes, the first computers were about people building their own stuff. And then, you know, in the 90s, the internet came around and it turned into just basically content consumption. I mean, how many people own a computer now and have ever created anything on it besides an email? Yeah. I mean, there's, there's, that's the majority, I would say. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So... I don't know. It, it's a it's an exciting time, and like I said, and a scary time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for a lot of reasons. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> there's numerous reasons to be scared and excited at the same time. So uh, I guess that's all the questions I have for you, uh, and because we've we've probably, I'm 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 curious as whether or not I've used up my entire memory card on this or not. So we'll, we'll, so this will be a surprise when I hit the button. Um, but is there anything else you wanted to, to mention before you go? Maybe some URLs or something. Uh, just yeah, technobuffalo dot com. You mm -hmm. know, stop by. We're we're always talking about phones for sure uh, yeah. and other exciting things in the consumer electronics industry. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you know, just swing by and take a look at what we have to offer. Sure, and uh, of course, seanpiani dot com and at seanpiani. Oh, and uh, at some point, some occasionally you can find us both on technobuffalo or Minecraft dot technobuffalo dot com. <laughs> yes, building things. <laughs> <laughs> someday your sugarcane farm will be finished. Yes, yeah, someday. Oh. <laughs> yeah, more conference calls. Some there got some of those coming up. <laughs> all right, folks. Well, let's let's uh, wish you all a, a happy new year. I'll let you guys get on with it and. Uh, you guys can keep track of how many of the things that we said come to pass this year, and, and of course the the ten year predictions. Those are you, you just just keep track. Let us know what, what we how we did because I'm sure I'll forget by then. Yeah, I think by 20, 2022, Yeah, I'm not gonna remember <laughs> what I said. You refer back to this video. Oh, dang it! Should have adjusted that. One. All right. So anyway, thanks for thanks for joining us, and uh, see you later, folks. <laughs>